Good morning, guys. Let's get back down to it here and see what is up. Okay, so uh, go here. Okay, uh, so we've got to go in here and make a change to my holdings. I did exit out of waiter yesterday, and this is now a 3,000 share holding. LMND. Let's take a look. Lemonade, this is the finance IPO, right? Fintech? Yeah. Um, I don't play Fintech. What is up, everyone? Um, am I going to get back into Waiter before earnings? Probably not. <laughs> Why did I leave Waiter? There ain't no sub badges. Oh, you better believe there are sub badges. What do you mean there ain't no sub badges? Hmm. I see sub badges. Uh, and I still am cycling panda. Um, so I'll pull up the chart here and show you guys. See, there are sub badges. There you are. Silver Hunters, thank you so much for being the sub. And it is there. And then if you go in here, you get these to play with as well. Yes, I do, Silver Huntress. I, I definitely do. Um, um, okay, guys. So with Waiter. Let's go look at Waiter, and I'll explain what's going on. Okay, guys? Uh, maybe we go... I guess we could go Koi Fed. Okay. That's the beaver. Um, let's go to year. Okay. So guys with waiter uh got in around here. Uh initial news of it spiked. Uh I sold up here. It dips down to the valley. I buy down here. It went up on its last news or on um, its Q1 unaudited results, right, up here, sold, came back down, bought in around here, uh, 1226, yeah, around here, news of its unaudited results came out, 
up here. 368. Uh, sold. It's going to do the same thing. We're going to see another bull, I think. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the bull. Um, and when the bull comes, I will buy back in. <laughs> I I mean I just maybe maybe <laughs> that's possible it's a possibility good morning everyone yeah no guys uh, I I know everybody's like oh what you said that this is what you're doing with waiter okay guys um one of the things that I do is I, I do have my strategies and I do put them out there but um like any good trader um, I'm not going to disclose my exact entries and exits on everything. Do I think Waiter is an $8 stock? Absolutely. Do I think it's an $8 stock tomorrow? No. Do I want to free up that capital for potentially something else? Yes. Um, so what I did, guys, was I actually increased my holdings uh, in IPix on the basis of... Mm. I'm not going to be able to find it now. And I closed it. <laughs> Dag nab it. Um, there was an article. I don't care. Um, July 4th, we're unleashing our nation's scientific brilliance. We'll likely have a therapeutic or vaccine solution long before the end of the year. Um, next week, administration officials plan to promote a new study they say shows promising results on therapeutics. They wouldn't describe the study in any further detail because they said its disclosure would be market moving. Um, my thought on this, guys, is that it will be Berlastin. Um Yeah, so as far as LMND go, guys goes, I, I don't play fintech. I, you know, it's an IPO, which definitely makes it of no interest to me um but here's ipex guys um here's their last news that we have on june 17th um so this it, it's a nano cap uh they announced their new results from ongoing lab tests uh it's not their lab it's actually a federal lab um they tested lung cell lung cells uh that had COVID in them with berlacidin, and it reduced the viral load from 95 to 97%. Um, just a, a, as a point of, of um, oh man, guys, it's 4.30 and my brain is not firing off. Um, just as a point of being able to understand why this is relevant and why this is important is remdesivir, which is the current one that's offered, is only 57% effective. This one is 95 to 97%. Um, yeah, I was hoping it was going to be yesterday. My hope was that they would lead the week with it, and they didn't lead the week with it. Um, I, I was hoping that there would be something at that press conference yesterday, but they were also busy talking about the NASCAR flag that they didn't actually get around to talking about the, the vaccination dice. I'm, now I'm starting to see these these subscriber things. Guys, I do appreciate the subscriptions. It, it means the world. Um and that you're up at 4.30 in the morning like a bunch of DJs hanging out with me. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. There's more time. So, I mean, the thing that I like about Berlassen is uh, this is the one that I've been playing as the COVID win. Um, you're up at 1.30. Damn. You make me look like a chump. Um, results when completed will be submitted for publication. Um, so... For Lasset and IPix actually started to check this out. <laughs> it's afternoon. Well, that's cheating. Um, for Lasset and actually uh, did their own study and only got 75%. And that's what made them start to go down this road of, well, if everybody's talking about, you know, Remdesivir and, and Moderna um, I, I, at 50, 60%, well, we're 75%, so we'll give it a shot. But then the, the registered bio lab tested it and it came up 95 to 97% effective. So kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Uh, 
So we'll wait and see what's next on this, guys. But as far as iFix goes, uh, let's go. Okay. Yeah, so iFix is 32 cents. I've got 3,000 shares, right? Oh, this is not the right way of doing this. Let's say hypothetically, okay, hypothetically, iFix is the pick, okay? Verlocidin not only works against uh, COVID, but it also works against swine flu and bird flu. So moving forward, this would just be the standard treatment for any of these flus, okay? So knowing that, knowing that Verlacin is going to be a swine flu, bird flu, uh, COVID treatment, vaccine, and secondary infection uh, treatment, like this will be first in line for all of those. This thing is going to be a huge moneymaker. So let's take a look at somebody else who has risen to stardom as a result of this, okay? So here is Moderna. Um, they went from $13 to $80 at their peak, okay? Uh, let's take a look at Gilead. From 63 to about that $80 mark. Um, who's another one? AstraZeneca, right? Again, from about $40 up to about that $55 range. Um, so... At the very least, let's say that you go up about 20 bucks, 25 bucks. It could be more, but let's say it's 20, 25 bucks, okay? So let's say IPix goes to 20 bucks, okay? And I've got, that would be what I'd pull in off of this trade, which wouldn't be half bad. So that's why I'm excited and, and antsy for this news to drop on, on what exactly it is they're talking about. But No, so um, the way it works is this, guys. I have 3,000 shares already, right? So I have 3,000 shares at a 32 cent per share basis, right? I'm saying the stock's gonna go up to $20. So 20 divided by, uh, $20 divided by 0.32, right? So this is this is how much my holdings is going to grow over that time. I have 3000 shares that are going to grow that much. It's going to go to that from where it was. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be it would be a 6000% gain. Um, times the 3,000 shares would lead me to 187 grand on that play. Which would be beautiful. So this was an announcement directly from Trump um, on the 3rd and the 4th. So we're waiting on that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that's that would be, not that this year hasn't been kind, this year has already been very kind. Um, let's go in here. Let's go here.
Oh, this is such a pain in the butt. All right, guys, here's a really uh, rudimentary breakdown of what the plan was for the year. Um, don't even remember what these calculations are for. Um, Yeah, there is some insider advice from the directors. Um, I'll, let's go here, let's go here, so we can see that. Um, insiders. President and the VP. And I mean, it, again, guys, 10 months ago, $54,000 of this stock is a massive amount of shares um all right guys so here was the plan for the year um my target for the year again i don't know what any of that math is tidy up the sheet okay um so this is quarterly targets monthly targets. So these are the targets that I set out for myself guys at the start of the year. Okay. So this is, this was the gauge. And the whole point was the goal was to grow a $3,000 portfolio to 50 K in a year. Okay. So when I started with this goal, this was a super ambitious goal. Um, law it, most people that you tell okay well i've never i've never been a full-time trader before I, I don't do this actively i'm gonna dive into it because of covid i've got the time i've got the ability to do it i think i think i could be successful at it um basically what happened was i <coughs> i set out to make this happen um so monthly targets and actuals um, so these targets here, I didn't have set guys. I kind of just had a check in halfway through the year and then keep going. Um, these are the actual numbers month by month of what I was able to pull in. Um, these are projection. Um, this is an actual in June. Um, these are projections. Um, so what the way this looks is I said, okay, $3,000 to get to $50,000. I have to have a 30% gain month over month. So 3,000, 3,900, five grand, 6,500, 8,500. You see how this goes, right? Uh, and this sends me a, a benchmark of if you're around this number, you should be okay heading into this, right? Um, in June, I was already at 27 grand in this. So I was significantly ahead. So I said, okay, well, if that's true, and I set myself a 30% gain uh, as a target over the following months, what happens if I continue to perform at that rate across these months? Well, there you go. Um, so currently, uh, Okay, um, TD won't have my holdings up because it's too early in the morning. So I'll have to go directly into the bank.
Uh, this is super frustrating. From 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., I can't access this information, and that's just... That's no good to anyone. This is this is prime time for traders to be on. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if there's another way that I can see these numbers, but I probably can't. Um. That's too bad. I'll I'll do a breakdown on this afterwards, guys. But I know that I'm ahead of this with my waiter win. I'm probably past this already, uh, if not close to. Um, so yeah, it, it's been a decent year so far, uh, and this is going to continue to grow. Um, Now, this is the initial target. If I don't hit this, that's fine. Um, but this is the initial target. I want to get it to 50 grand. Um, so that, that that's what that is. That's what that looks like. Um, um, I For me, it's not about where I am. It's about where I set a target for myself to be, right? Um, and this is where I, I, I get on my motivator high horse. Um, that that millennial motivator side of me comes out where it's like it's not necessarily about well look at all you've accomplished it's about well what what was the bar that you set for yourself what was the target you set for yourself and how do you achieve that so for me when i break that fifty thousand line i'm gonna be a happy man you'll, you'll see me happy i'll throw a little party i'll do a little dance it'll be a great day but um until that happens the growth that i've had um just isn't isn't enough um, and that's, that's not to say it's out of a place of greed. It's, it's almost entirely, uh, an intellectual basis for me where I, I, I need to know that I'm capable of achieving the, the metrics that I set for myself. That's going to be important moving forward. Um, I mean, what I'm most proud of guys is, um, my portfolios as a whole, right? Um, my ability over these months to build a solid long equity portfolio in possibly one of the most um possibly one of the most challenging sectors of the market um so i got to update the date again um update that um and then on top of that, here are two. So this is this is a, a short strategy that uh, it was an initial hypothesis that I had on how this works. Uh, Martini and I have been working together to fine tune it, and it's producing phenomenal results. Um, here's one that I created over the weekend when we had Friday off. I created a new uh, strategy. This one's uh, prepping for earnings season coming up. Um, and it's showing itself to be quite effective as well. Uh, over 70% win rate, um, profits look good. So this is one that I'm going to continue to track as well. Um, but ultimately, um, over 30 data points, if you had made all 30 of these trades, um, you'd be looking at almost eight grand in profit on a $10,000 bankroll which isn't bad, right? Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of these strategies and the ability to theory craft um, what I see happening in the market and, and make it fly, make it stick. Um, are you guys interested in that, in, in learning how, how you build out a, um, a trading strategy of that kind? Because there's, there's other sectors that I can look at that I can build this out with. Um, yeah, ACRX has phenomenal DD. Um, that one was just reading a ton of news. Um,
Okay. So the way that it works, guys, it's really, really simple to start. Um, okay, blank sheet. Stream hypothesis. Okay, so do we want to do bio sector? Do we want to do tech sector? Do we want to do uh, consumer staples, financials? What do you guys want to do? We can create a hypothesis about anything. Okay, so we'll do bio. Okay, so let's say on bio, the hypothesis is... Um, Let's say the hypothesis is um, irregardless of what the stock is, what the medical news is, any of that, an FDA approval is a buy. Okay, that's the hypothesis. FDA approval is a buy. Okay, that's the hypothesis. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to head here and create some columns. So we'll need ticker, stock price, uh, phase approval, um, let's switch these, let's go phase approval, um, Entry, exit, profit. Uh, we'll need more than that. It'll have to be entry, uh, sizing, exit, no, uh, seizing. That's not good. Sizing, exit, profit. Here I'm gonna want win rate. I'm gonna want uh, bankroll. I'm gonna want uh, percent gain. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's agree on a bankroll. How how much money do we have to put into one of these plays? Three K. Okay. Three thousand bucks. So we've got a three thousand dollar portfolio that we can play with. Okay, guys. Now what we're gonna do is go in here and go FDA approval. And we are not gonna show any bias here whatsoever, okay? Um every drug that pops up on this. So here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. We'll do probably start off with about 10 of these, okay? Um, the one thing that we didn't add on this was a timeline. FDA approval is a buy. Sell. Day trade opportunity. So in and out, okay? That's the idea. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at Evoke Pharma for June 22nd. I'm gonna have to pull up my charts to do this. Um, you guys won't be able to see the charts, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing uh, as far as tracking down a price on that date, okay? So um, Okay, evoke, E V O K. Okay. 
Uh, one month out. June 22nd. Let's go day. Okay, so June 22nd. Uh, maybe I do want to show you guys this. Let's do this. Okay, so June 22nd. Here we are, guys, right here. Um, news came out. Uh, the open was 453. The close was 380. Okay. Um, so what I'm proposing is I want to find a trend off of this. Um, so it got its FDA approval. This might be another short strategy. Um, so we're trying to ascertain whether it's a buy or a sell trade opportunity. So, um, let's go. So this is EVOP. Uh, phase approval. This had a I suppose that if we're not going to be picky about that, we don't really need to have which phase it is. So let's get rid of that and just make it these. And I'm going to move this stuff over here. And tighten this. Okay, so our entry would have been in the morning at the open. Um, so when we look at the ca the candle here, uh, what I like about TD is on the charts here, it, it pops open. I'm trying to simplify that. So that's what that's what this hypothesis is for. Is let's let's build a new strategy. I'll actually probably develop this over the day, but let's actually build a strategy here where we're saying you don't need to understand bio. You don't. Okay. You just need to understand the price movement on bio when events happen. Okay. So let's see what happens. If you had bought this at the open at 453, right? So you guys can see that over here in this box. Watch the the numbers. Um, open was 453. Close was 380. Okay. So let's go over the sheet, entry, 453, exit, 380, okay? Um, I'm, I'm not gonna do the, the sizing yet, but it'll be, well, I guess I can put in the formula. At least it'd be this times this, no, not times, um, be this, divided by this. Okay. Um, um, and this will be, uh, it's equal to um, this times this minus the initial investment. Okay. Uh, and let's format these numbers currency. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, so what I did here, guys, is I so we've got the stock, we've got our entry on the open, we've got uh, our sizing. This one actually isn't a uh, change the format on this. This is just a number. Uh, Obviously, we can't take uh, a quarter of a share, but for now, we'll leave that. Um, okay, so that's Evoke. Let's move on to the next one. And faster. AMPH, this is on the 9th. Um, so we'll head back over to the chart.
AMPH. Where did I say the 9th? Yeah, June 9th. AMPH. June 9th. Uh, the open was 2029. The close was 2055. Sizing. Exit is 2055. Oh, I see what I did wrong here. It's going to be this. E1. Oh, for Pete's sake. There we go. Now it's working. Okay, so we've got that locked in uh, and we're just gonna keep going here. We're gonna clear all of these articles that we had. So uh, Fitbit on the 15th of May. Six fifty two, six fifty five. Um, next one, Jaguar Health, Jag X. Uh, May twelfth, fifty eight, fifty seven. Okay, next, and, and we don't really care about the results yet. It's just about plugging in the, the tickers, May 28th, LLY. One forty seven forty three one fifty sixty five one forty seven sixty three. One fifty sixty five. Next is Lily May ninth, Hudo One eighty nine twenty five two oh eight ninety five. Two oh eight ninety five. Huge on June third.
And already I'm starting to see patterns form here, guys, as I'm looking at this data and I'm, I'm seeing what's happening here. Um, I, I'm starting to see some patterns form pretty quickly here. Uh, Roche, RHHB, excuse me. June 4th. Three oh five, forty three, thirty five. What the heck is Roche? RHH B one. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, we already have a Lily on here. Uh. This is not a specific stock. I feel like there should be more than these, but I guess it doesn't matter. GPRE May 5th. GPRE May 5th, 687 to 661. Okay, uh, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's do one more. So we have a solid, a nice round number. Um, Exox, A, X, and X. And we're looking at which date here. January 21st, so six months back. Thirty-one fifty, thirty-one eighty-four. Okay, um, so what we're looking at here, guys, is our initial data set, okay? So from this, is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, all right, so taking a look at this, let's go, um, let's do a sum over the, over the 10 trades that we've taken from the start of January, because January was the earliest, right? How profitable would this strategy be if we put this into place? Okay, so sum. Okay, we would have lost $1,500 doing this, okay? Now, that being said, where are our big losers? Okay, so here's a big loser. All right, so this is a big loser, right? Uh, conditional formatting. Uh, less than or equal to zero. I want this to go red. Add another rule. Greater than zero. I want it to go Okay, so were there wins in the strategy? Absolutely. Were there losses in the strategy? Absolutely. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? No, um, because you can play stocks either way, right? You can buy or sell it. Our hypothesis allows for both. There's a buy-sell day trade opportunity on these stocks out of the open, okay? 
So what we're seeing here is uh, over this small data set that we have, um, if we take out our uh, losses, what do our losses have in common? 453, 58 cents, $14, $6, okay? So what do we have in common with our, our, our major losses? It looks like if we just create a sum, right? Let's go over here and sum everything under $14. Okay, we'll say 15, but anything under 15 bucks. Let's see what happens. So let's add up the losses and gains from anything under $15. Okay, so everything under $15 is down to grand. What if we add up everything then over $15, right? Um, This, this, this. This, this. Okay, so this starts to show us that there's possibility of two very distinct plays here. One is, this is under $15, right? This is over $15. So what do you guys think? What are your thoughts looking at these results just from this initial data set? What can we say about this hypothesis? What can we say about an FDA approval is a buy or sell day trade opportunity on these stocks? Class, Bueller, anybody there? Okay, so there's definitely movement to be made. Now, um, people would look at this and they would go, okay, well, um, look at all the money you lost here. And this is hypothetical, right? It's not real money dollars, but this is all the money you lost here. This is all the money you gained. What if instead of us losing money, what if we took shorts on this? What happens if you take a short on this? Well, it's this times negative one. Right. And now what we've done is we've found a potential strategy that produced over a series of 10 trades from January till June on a $3,000 bankroll. A percent gain of. This plus this divided by this, All right? Uh, backwards. This divided by this. So a 20% gain. Nineteen percent gain. Who here would like a nineteen percent gain over six months on their portfolio of three thousand dollars? For most, that that's not bad money, right?
if we head back over to the charts here, let me show you what the SPY has done since January. Okay. So had you just bought the SPY on January, on January 1st, where is it? We opened at 320 on the SPY, okay, January 1st. If you had just put it in the SPY over the same period, you would be down money right now. I'm talking you put it in and that's it, you're done on the SPY. Are we beating the SPY for the year is a very common metric, guys, um, for gauging the level of success that you're having. 20% um, return right now is looking pretty good given that the stock market has done what it's done. Um, so this this for me would say, okay, well, there's potential uh, in this. So I'm gonna rename this initial sample size. I'm gonna duplicate it twice. This is going to be short, short sub 15. This one's going to be buy over 15, All right? Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through these and populate them with data. Slight scale, thank you for the follow, man. I, I really do have to figure out how to get these notifications up. Um, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, but I'm a bit of a boomer when it comes to this stuff. So what we do now, guys, is we go back in here um, and anything that is, so we'll start with the, the short one um, and we'll go, okay, anything that isn't, anything that isn't, $15 or less disappears from this, okay? So those are gone. That's gone. That's gone. Uh, and we can just delete that row. Delete that row. Okay, so now we have to change the hypothesis on this page, right? Because the hypothesis now is <clears throat> FDA approval under 15 is a short day trade. That's the hypothesis on this page. Oh, streaming TD right now. Okay. <clears throat> this is the new hypothesis is on this sheet. Uh, an FDA approval under $15 is a short day trade. So what we need to do is go back in here and go, let's just type FDA, because I know that there was a lot more approvals in this. Um, so let's type in FDA. Now remember, we had only been playing approvals, and this is a different one. This is a rejection. So make sure that you're 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 staying solid on that. That an FDA approval is what we're looking at. Okay. Um,
Okay, that should be enough to get us rolling here. Um, let's go back over here, and we need to fix this one, right? So on this one, it's anything over 15 is a buy. So uh, get rid of that. Get rid of those. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Uh, the new hypothesis is FDA approval. FDA approval over fifteen dollars is a buy, right? Get rid of the sum on this. Okay. So now that this is set up, guys, uh, the only other thing we need to do is go over to the short and um, So we have to inverse this, right? Um, because we're we're going to be shorting these positions. Um, all right, and let's start to go through this. So ABT, ABT is a ninety-two dollar stock. So we'll be heading over to our buy fifteen. And again, we want to create a data set of about ten to start with. So Abbott, the news is on July sixth. Open 1428, close 1440. 1428, 1440. Control C. Control C. Okay. So let's add it. Next. Uh, ADCT forty eight ninety three. ADCT ADCT, and this news was from the six as well. Fifty two twenty two. Has removed it. Okay, so this is not an approval. This is it removing a hold. Uh, this is not a play we can take. Meso thirteen. Okay, so Meso is thirteen. That's it. That's gonna go on our short side, right? We're gonna go over here. Meso. Uh, the news was on the 6th. Open was 13.01. Close was 13.14. 13.01. Open was 13.01. Let's see. Okay, Vero, 341. This is going to be another one of these. Vero. So right now, I'm just showing people how I build out a bio strategy. So there's two strategy, three strategies that are already create on long equity bio, uh, and that's six to 18 months out. Um, I, I built a uh, earnings hypothesis 
uh, strategy over the weekend on Friday. Um, I also have a short selling strategy that Martini Rita and I have been developing. Um, I'm showing people what that process looks like to actually create a strategy, take a hypothesis, apply it to the market, take it through and actually develop something that you might be considered trading. So uh, we started with initial samples on this that showed that there was potential gain given to two certain rule sets that could over six months take a $3,000 bankroll and give you a 20%, close to a 20% return on it. So what I'm doing now is I'm breaking down how do we get there and are do these things remain true over a larger set of data? So um, again, what we're gonna do here is you start small and take little chunks and the little chunks prove true, great, you keep moving forward. If they disprove themselves with a small sample size, odds are they'll probably disprove themselves with a larger sample size. So I just scrap them and I move on. Um, and you could do this with tons of ideas and we may actually find out this morning that both of these ideas are bad ideas and we could just scrap the whole strategy and we'd have to go back to the beginning and come up with a new idea. But uh, Martini's a huge fan of telling me constantly, there's always another idea out there. So uh, don't be afraid to do that guys. If your data doesn't support your decision, don't try to make it fit it to support the decision uh okay so july 1st vero three forty seven three nineteen luminix this will be in a long June 29th. Thirty fifty eight, thirty two fifty three. Oh, this is Luminix gets a warning letter. That's not what we want. We're looking for FDA approvals. Okay, so I need to do a better job of reading that. It has to be FDA approvals. FDA OKs. Okay, so this is an approval. FDA approves. Rare. 86.75. And what date is this? June 30th. Seventy three, seventeen, seventy eight, twenty two. Seventy three, seventeen, seventy eight, twenty two. Okay. This is CNTG. This is an approval. CNTG. CNTG. July 2nd. Twenty six fifty, twenty four fifty. Six fifty, twenty four fifty. Okay, up next. PFE. So Pfizer. July 1st. Thirty-four fifty-four. Thirty-three seventy-four. Broger gets FDA okay. Thirty-three seventy-three. First, okay, 
So this isn't an approval. This is just them getting an okay to sell kits. This is a Keytruda. This is an approval. This is Merc. I was going to say, Kroger's a grocery store. That doesn't make sense. Merc. FDA approval. June 29th. Seventy five ninety, seventy six twelve. Okay, so There's two possible plates on this, guys. I'm going to take the non-OTC plate. Uh, so instead of Roche, I'm going to take Halo on this. And see what that does. Ideally, you want to stay off. I mean, we already have a Roche up here. Let's do Halo. That's on the 29th of June. Twenty five oh three, twenty five eighty two. All right, what do we have here? All right, so here's the initial data set that we're we're laying out for the positive. Okay, um, so we've got five. It looks like we got eleven. One, two. Yeah, so we've got 11 to choose from here, guys. Um, so again, we're going to do the same thing. Is this a profitable strategy? Yep, we'd make 500 bucks on that. And most of these trades came from the last... I think the furthest we went back was June 22nd. So uh, over a span of two weeks, uh, we'd be up 500 bucks on this on a $3,000 payroll. Uh, initial bankroll. Um, so percent gain would be, what do I have here? H1 divided by F10. Uh, so make this Uh, this just becomes this. H1 divided by E15. That can't be right. Oh, these are backwards, All right? Should be E15 divided by What am I doing wrong here? H1, oh, come on. H1 divided by H1 plus E15.
85% gain at all. This is stupid. You don't need the one. Well, that shows me an 85% gain. 85% gain is not right. Equals this divided by this. There's the formula right there. I'm such a bonehead sometimes. X, this, V, perfect, done, done. This as a percentage. Voila! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> man, oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's too early for this, I tell you. Yeah, so here it is, guys. So this is... This is our buy 15 side, right? Um, and this buy 15 is, uh, I want the win rate calculator from this. Control C, this, 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 this. Um, but this will not be as a percentage. I want this maxed out. Let's go here. Uh, this is just a number. just a number number okay and this is going to be this uh okay undo that this go here copy paste oh i want the formula dang it i don't want the this this Except I want it to be um, E. 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 Okay, so this has an 83% win rate. Ooh, good catch. This is true. This one has to be removed. And that's fine because that gives us a, it doesn't overly affect what we're doing here. So we would have a 16% gain over two weeks with this strategy, guys, um, and an 82% win rate. Who, who likes this strategy? Is this still looking good to everybody? Are we gonna keep this? Are we gonna keep building data into this one? Or are we gonna let this one slide? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. We like them tendies. Okay, so now let's move over to our short. Let's try to populate our short here. Um, and this may this may take us a little longer because we've got to find stocks that are down in that short level. All right, here's a short, CHMA. Oh, I should have just moved the Abbott one over. Pepe hands. Oh well. Uh, CHMA on June 26. Six ninety-five to six oh eight. Yeah, I could have. I instead I just bloody deleted it. Massimo. Oh, that's a big boy. Sigenix. No. No. Interesting. Because this has happened. Oh, I know what I did. Um, guys, so with Abbott, what I did wrong was I did, I put in ABT and it selected a Canadian stock name ABT. It didn't select Abbott because look at Abbott. Abbott's $92. It definitely should have been on that sheet. Um, it, yeah, it's not going to be a, a sub 15. Um, AXNX, no. Okay. So we just have to keep going here and find some more data samples.
Okay, Evoke Pharma. I think we already have this one, though. Yeah, this was the first one that we took. Okay, so Evoke is off. KPTI, too much. Mayav, too much. Abby, too much. MBT, too much. Rare, too much. This is a marketing application. This is not a drug approval. Oh, so close. Okay, and we keep going. And this is this is the hard part is accumulating the data here, guys, and and actually figuring out. Okay, so open this. I'm just skipping the ones, guys, that I see that I know the company. Okay, XO. Okay, that'll be one. PPZM, close, but no cigar. Zygenix, no. And I think AMPH is a no. Okay. Well, at least we got EXO. So let's do EXO. Uh, date on EXO is June 25th. What I'm searching for is FDA approved. I said June 26th, right? 25th, okay. Nine ninety nine, eight seventy seven. Seven. Okay, one more. EVFM. Nope. Okay, EVFM is going to be our last one for the short. EVFM. Uh, they granted approval on the... 22nd. Um, didn't this say approval? News came after hours on Friday, the well, holiday weekend, so it would be the next day. It would be May 22nd, but it would be the 26th they were actually able to trade it. So that would be 683 to 579. 683... Five seventy nine. Mm 
Yup. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's auto sum this. Damn. <laughs> so this goes back to May 22nd, guys. Divided by this. Win rate. Okay, right. so what we have developed here is a hypothesis off of this original thing. So you guys, have you see how my brain works here. You see how I go through these. Of We just started with a shot in the dark of like, okay, we picked the biosector. What's a thought that we have about the biosector? What's something that we think might be true? Okay, FDA approval is a buy-sell trade opportunity. We think that there's an opportunity when the FDA grants an approval, uh, open, close, there's an opportunity. Um, as long as you buy at the open, you get out of the close, there's a move that's being made. In the initial sample that we had of 10 stocks, which isn't a huge sample size, but is a sample size, what we were able to see is that overall, the strategy was not profitable, right? So if you just bought, right, you went long on everything and you just took long equity in each of these positions on a $3,000 bankroll, you would have lost $1,500. Now, what we did note, though, was everything over $15, if we just took those trades, we would be up $465. Bucks. If, we if we just looked at the ones that we had down 50, uh, uh, under $15, uh, we would be down two grand. So most of our losses came from stocks under $15. What do you do when you see most of your plays are creating a massive loss? That means that there was probably a short opportunity, especially if you're playing in equity. So uh, what we did was we inversed it and said, okay, well, if that's true, if you would have lost two grand, if you shorted it and went the other way, you would have made two grand. Um, so now what we had are two potential strategies off of this, right? One is short any bio that gets an FDA approval that is under $15 on its stock price. And the other one is buy any stock that is over $15. Okay. And this is how we played out. What we have here now are two strategies over 80% effective. Uh, one had a total gains of... One, this was only over two weeks though, so it's a bit of a longer time span, but over two weeks, this one here had a $500 uh, gain on a $3,000 portfolio, so 16% gain um, over two weeks with an 80% win rate. Who's interested? Who likes it? All right. On this side, we've got this one back to May. Uh, oh, actually, this one, yeah, this one, this one back to... Uh, some of these may, might have gone back further. It's maybe, the shorts may have gone back to January. But even if it's from January, over six months, if you could have a 115% gain, yeah, yeah, we're investing the full three grand on every play. Sizing is set to take our bankroll, divide it by the entry cost. So this is only a $3,000 entry at every play.
All right, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna go fill up my water here. I will be right back, guys. 60 seconds, we'll be right back, and then maybe we can take a look at the market. Hopefully this helps you guys understand how I develop these strategies. Uh, I feel like I'm a boomer and I don't understand that reference. <laughs> yeah, it would be 10 plays. Uh, 10 plays. It's 15k a week. Uh, 10 plays over two weeks. Uh, so you're putting three grand in, 15k a week, but it's the same three grand. <laughs> Thank you, stock guy. <laughs> I love that math. <laughs> trifecta uh yeah so guys everybody gets kind of what i went through here now uh ideally guys what i i would go and do from this point on because there is and i'll probably do this today i will probably uh continue to build this out um is i would uh then take this because this is a small data set right it's a very very small data set i would expand this um so you'll see with these guys here we have significantly more data um, this is about 30 pieces, 30 sample size on this strategy. Uh, this one here, it's about the same. We're, we're getting close to 30 pieces of data. Uh, and the more data that you have, the more likely it is that you'll be able to understand what's going on. Um, yeah. But, I mean, this is great. Now I've got four potential strategies here. Um, I'm going to retitle this the FDA approval strat. Uh, and this one is Earning strut. All right, so there you go. Now I've got four strategies, my long equity bio, I've got my earning strategy, and I've got my FDA approval strategy, and my shorting strategy. And this is just a nice little tool shed of ideas that I have. Now that took us uh, to come up with a hypothesis and to troubleshoot. It took us an hour and a half of work, guys, to do that. But this is what I'm talking about when people wake up in the morning, they're like, oh, but... I don't want to work. I just want my attendees. I just want to print. It's like, okay, well, you can do that. But the the odds of you building a portfolio, a substantial portfolio, um, just throwing money at a dartboard isn't going to be nearly as successful as you taking the time to do something like this, committing the hour and a half, right? So, uh, what's that? Like uh, three episodes of a TV show, right? Like, uh, you know, an hour and a half less of video games a day or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad investment for your time. And like I said, conveniently, this one worked out pretty well. But you guys can do this for any sector. It doesn't matter what sector you trade. If you, if you trade tech, you probably know and can recognize some pattern in tech, right? So for tech, you could do... Um, 
What would be an example of a tech? See, I, I don't know that sector. But if you knew that sector, you would knew, know, okay, so if it's, yeah, conference, right? So conference. You type conference in here and look at everything that comes up for conferences. And you can create a conference strategy that whenever anybody speaks at a conference strategy, I think their stock is going to go up. Oh, okay. And then you would develop that strategy out the same way. Um, but putting in that work ahead of time allows you to pull a, a thing of data. Uh, yeah, chip announcements, exactly. Um, this, this just gives you that ability to do that uh, fairly easily. Um, and it's just a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and that's going to get you much further along, I think. Um, all right, let's take a look at the markets and what they are up to. We're looking green, boys. We're looking green. Latest news. Okay, so Coifin again is not doing its job as far as telling me what's going on in the market. So uh, this is as of 6 a.m. Japan is down, Hong Kong's down, China's up a little bit. This looks like a sideways day with downward trending. That'd be sweet, Smash. Yeah, I'd love to take a look at that. Uh, Martini would probably love to look at that if you come up with an idea. Um, yeah. Okay, so markets are down. And that's on spike in U.S. virus cases. Yawn so hard to get locked jaw. Oh. Right in there. Trifecta, do you have a link on that? I don't see that.
See, this is what kills me. Ouch. See, this is what kills me with this, though. Like, phase one clinical data will be available soon. Like, that better not be the market moving news, because I'm going to be pissed if that's the market moving news. I want to see some freaking data on this trial. I'm gonna be pissed if that was the news. If if that was the news, I just uh. All right, top movers for the day. Yeah, uh, yikes. I mean... Oh, 
I want to see the data, but I want to see the data on all of them. None of the data has been particularly inspiring. Thanks for the follow, Saki. Appreciate that, man. Um, This is encouraging for me where I'm looking at this and going, okay, so BlackRock, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Microsoft, Shopify, Shaw Communications, BCE, which is a huge company in Canada. Only in the mornings, only in the mornings, uh, Polaris Infrastructure and Westport. I just want them to get their China approval so bad. Okay, so we've got Endologics up, pre-market. S&P futures are moving up. I think that Novavax news as it filters down will drive the market up. So maybe that is the market moving news. There it goes. Spy is moving up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I... I, that's kind of what I like about this time slot is I'll get the, the folks from North America that are just waking up, they're getting ready to go, uh, but I also get Europeans, I also get, um, I also get uh, people from the Asian market. Okay, so this is a... Yield GX. They filed for Chapter Eleven and they're up seventy percent today. This is a this is a retail trade for sure. Uh, fuel Tech. Okay, this is on them picking up two big contracts, apparently, F-Tech. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Canadian. I invest in uh, almost exclusively the U.S. market. Okay, so they picked up a $2.2 million orders, or they picked up $2.2 million orders. Uh, Trifecta, just because they've been welcomed into Operation Warp Speed doesn't mean squat until we see those numbers. These companies need to start showing their data, because... All right, so the market's going to react to that. I think that comes back down. Yeah, I feel it. I feel for you. Down 47% yesterday, up 21% today. OBSV.
Okay, so this fell hard yesterday on data from their initial, initial study. It's buying back up today. VSLR is only 11%. This is 20%. AEZS. Okay, so there, this is coming up on their equity offering. Good morning, Lucas. <laughs> Need a YOLO. I don't have one for you, buddy. Um, unless you want a short. Good morning for me. Tough morning for uh, Trifecta, for sure. Let's go to stock twits. F tech. Oh, I'm sorry, Trifecta. I am. I, I know what that feels like, man. I, I know what that feels like to have it just slip through your fingers like that.
Oh, that's good to hear me. Copper. Yeah, I, I could see that. I could see with all the battery talk going on the EV. Uh, copper would definitely go up. What's up, little dude? You want to come hang out and do stocks? It's the monies. All these numbers mean things. This is the name of the company up here. And this is how much it's worth. And this is how much it's worth before the market opens. And Daddy tries to buy low and sell high unless I'm shorting. And then I try to sell low, buy high. No. Sell high, buy low. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know where I even got this Oklahoma shirt, to be honest. I just like it. Uh, th this is my oldest boy. Um, my oldest girl wouldn't fit on my lap anymore. She's she's 15, 16. But yeah, he's he's getting long. He keeps asking me to get a haircut, right? You want to go to the barber? Yeah. But most of my kiddos are pretty early risers, so. All right. What do you think about stocks? Hmm? I don't know. Should dad buy stocks? Mm. Yeah, lots of them. Mm -hmm. All the stocks, I should mm -hmm. buy them all. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then sell them. Mm -hmm. And how much money would I make? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you sound like a banker. Maybe um, a thousand. Maybe a thousand. Oh, I'd like to make a thousand today. That'd be good. Uh. What are you trying to work on? I think the stock works too because look, we have a bad thing. Where? That thing we pressed onto this. Does? Yeah. Yeah. We have it. Gotta start them young. They gotta learn young, right? So the government's giving this company a billion dollars. You know how much billion is? A thousand million. Well, there's the news. It's dropped for everyone. I'm sure Novavax is going to soar on this. Um, still not one of the top movers, though. Well, there it is. There it is. It popped up. How about 70, 78? I can see 78. Daddy, what were you working on? Where did you get that? Hmm. This is my work. Is it like a man school? That is? Kind of. On VXRT and XSPA. What do you like about these? VXRT. Vaxart. Vaxart? No, I don't like Vaxart. Don't like. Vaxart low. Express Spa? What's Express Spa doing here? Screening and testing in airports. Yeah, this one doesn't look like a hot bad play at all. Um, I'd have to do a deeper dive into it, but this doesn't look awful. XSPA? Um, 
How's DGLY doing today? This has come down nicely. This is coming down nicely. Um, I might take a position in this. Yeah. Um, just because things are tied to Operation Warp Speed for me isn't a play. Um, that's not true. Uh, yeah, Facken, that's not true. Pfizer produces oral. Um, who are the other players? AstraZeneca has an oral. Um, yeah. I I'm not a fan of it. Um but Pfizer, we don't even we don't even have a drug really from Pfizer yet. And they're part of our Operation Warp Speed. That's my issue with issue with the companies that are part of Operation Warp Speed is um they're still trying to decide how they're gonna do this. So this is July second. BioNTech, mRNA vaccines. So this is very similar to how mRNA is developing their vaccine stuff um i don't think that this is the winner this style of, of vaccination this mrna yeah i this is no good um so what kills me with these is none of these guys are putting out their data uh, if you go to mrna and look for their their uh phase uh vaccine trials delayed This is delayed. I, I would love to see Moderna's actual data. Uh, I, I would definitely love to see them actually put out uh, some kind of phase one, phase two data. Uh, what else? Huh? What are the ones? AstraZeneca. I want to look at uh, Novavax. I'd love to see something from mRNA. Is that you? Um, yeah, so fact you're trading you're trading bio differently than I trade bio. Things and stuff are definitely happening. We got that on Pfizer, their human trials produce fevers in high doses. Their smaller dose didn't. Um where do you see the data from Pfizer? Okay. Day 28, all subjects received mild dosages. Okay, so that that that's a followed. I want to know the efficacy. How how did it work against the drug against the virus? Um 
preliminary top line data. They don't have full study for me to look at. Total subjects, blah, 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 neutralizing GMT of 33, which are three times and 0.3 times respectively, GMT and GMT have found less than serum panel. Okay, uh, adverse reactions is secondary preliminary data together with additional pre clinical it will be used by the two companies to determine a dose level. Select among multiple vaccine candidates to seek progress to global phase 3 BB. The trial may involve up to 30,000. BNT candidate remains under clinical study, is not currently approved for distribution anywhere in the world. Yeah, so there's there's no efficacy in this. At day 20, all subjects had significantly elevated RBD binding antibodies with geometric concentrations, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there's no efficacy data in this, and that's what I'm talking about. A full phase one trial will show you the efficacy of the of the drug, uh, and this doesn't have that. It, it's not here. It they have adverse effects. It has oh. is the drug doing what it's supposed to be doing and binding to the uh, the RNA from the 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 disease, but it doesn't say how effective that is. Simply doesn't say how effective it is. Um, Market's going to move up on this news for sure, though. So we're going to be green coming out the gate. FDA approves QWO. So... This is great because we can add this to the FDA approval strategy we created today. Uh, and it's going to be, what's the name of the company? ENDP. Daddy, why do you have a walkie-talkie? In case I need to call somebody. Why do you not have your phone? Why do you not use your phone? Daddy? Why do you not use your phone? Um, so it's still not a top mover. Um, Endologix, FuelTech, Novavax are still the top leaders. Pardon. Mm -hmm. What's that thing with the triangles on it on the top of the board? Here? Or this? Not that one. Where? Point. There's blue one. This one? Yeah. That's uh, an article, a medical article. Daddy reads for Daddy. When is PFE getting its pump? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say this data here is not mind-blowing for me um what what i need to see is how well does the bloody thing work and to date i just haven't seen it I, i'm not seeing it um data it's this crazy thing that we do when we work in bio um is you look for actual data this is data 95 to 97% effective. How many bits for kiddo to get a treat? 
No treats. It's too early for you. What are you going to do about it? Oh. See that? Parental abuse. Okay, so pre-market, it looks like there's only two that are getting nutty here. We'll see what the market does, though, as we continue to move forward here. You want to hand that? No. You want to go? No. Okay. Um, I'm not a big fan of Reddit. Um, it at best it's third party news. Um, at best, uh, it, it's not something I, I consider a validated source. Anything that I get off of Reddit, I would have to find additional data for. Um, but again, I'm not I'm not a retail day trader. Um, I still like the I still like WP eleven twenty two. Uh, I know Colonel has said that he thought he saw something about a, a mortality rate on the drug that wasn't there. Um, I went back and looked at the reports. I didn't see anything in the reports to indicate that. I mean, their pipeline still looks good, right? But this is now, uh, outside of COVID, um, Moleculin is probably more of a... Um, is probably more of a two-year play. It's a much longer play. Can't hold all that long. I understand that. Um, they may be a Europe play for COVID. Um, the universities in Germany really like the data that's coming out on it there. But as far as that being a huge play here, it's just not popping up. Job market recovery.
What's Bloomberg got for us today? TikTok leaving Hong Kong is big. U.S. says foreign students must leave. That's kind of a big deal. If you're a foreign student who's here attending university, you have to go home. That's going to be huge. So in the fall, you either have to go home or transfer to a university that's going to be open. So that, that's Harvard. Well, I think more of the point is, is getting that degree, right? So Harvard has announced that they're going to go online, which means anybody that's attending Harvard from uh, an international student to get that degree from Harvard, especially Harvard Law or Harvard Medical, um, that's gone now. I don't even know how they're going to do Harvard Medical. But Harvard Law, that's gone. You got to go back home to do your schooling? Like, it's tough. China warns Canada to back off. Huawei's in big trouble here. This is more and more countries. That's the that's France and the UK now pulling back on that.
Crazy days. All right, market, what do you got? Bolsonaro may have COVID. Hmm. At the very least, guys, I think the markets are going to be green as we open up here. Um, Do we have any earnings coming up? Today after market Levi's, tomorrow before open, simply good. Bed Bath & Beyond is coming up. WD-40 is coming up, otherwise it's a pretty slow week. I'm just interested in earnings because I've got a new earnings strategy that I'm trying to get data for. So paychecks is the only one before open here. All right, guys, I think that's going to be it for me. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a ton of news, not a lot of stuff happening and moving other than what we've already covered. So, oh, there's VXRT. There's your VXRT there at 25%, 24%. Um, but yeah, guys, it looks like uh, Novavax was the big news that the government was looking to drop. So that's unfortunate. I was hoping it to be IPIX, but it's not. So I will continue to wait on ipix um and let's see where the day takes us hopefully guys breaking down how to build a strategy was useful for you um if you're not already subscribed guys i do go live every single day monday through friday it's 4 30 a.m to 7 a.m eastern standard time if you miss the start of this i will be doing a rerun on twitch uh, as well as making the video for this live session searchable on youtube so you guys can catch that there have a great day guys stay safe out there and i will see you tomorrow morning later